Did you lose the straws of rock, paper, scissors you had to come out first? I guess so, <laughs> yeah. All right, questions for Coach Lem. Well, talk about the process that what ends it end, ended up with you being here. Well, I, I guess it would be a long process starting back with being a teammate of Kalani and, and we were close friends there and had each other's backs and uh, on the field and off the field. And, and then really, I would say we've been probably interviewing each other in a, in, to put it in a business sense over the last 15 or so years is we've kept track of each other and um, where he's been, where I've been. And it's kind of neat to see guys grow. Um, I think oftentimes we, you know, guys that we played with, if we don't stay in contact, we tend to keep them in the same box that we knew them 20 years ago as young guys. And uh, he's grown tremendously, and I'm, I'm uh, so proud of him and what he's accomplished. And it's an honor for me to be a part of his staff. What are you as a process of learning more assistance? Um, it's a daily, ongoing process. And, and I'm not privy to every one of those conversations. We meet briefly as a staff each day and talk really at this point about um, the general shape of the staff, how it ought to look. And uh, there, there are specific names that I, I probably am not at liberty to share, but uh, it's coming together really well. I think on your role. No, I, I don't have a deadline. I don't think I have an authority to have a deadline, but, uh, and I haven't heard of any, any deadlines. Can you speak on your role um, as the head coach? Kind of sure. Broad? Yeah, it is broad, and I think it's um, flexible by design. Um, including the position that I'll that I'll coach right now, it looks like I'll be the tight ends coach, and um, and and probably more solid than that is to coach the special teams. But I think that over time, um, you know, in the immediate future, as we put together the rest of the staff, I'm, I may move to defense. I don't. That's not off the table. That's where most of my coaching experience is, and I'm comfortable there as well as offense. Um, and then, as we work through how this program is going to be managed and led. If I can help Kalani in any way that we're not talking about right now, then uh, we have the flexibility designed in the system to do that. What, what was Kalani's sale pitch to you? I mean, you had a, a great situation at Southern Utah. They, they were playing yeah. so well. What, what did he say to you that drew you over here? You know, that, that wasn't even part of the process. It was, um, I think it was always clear that if, um, you know, if either one of us had the opportunity to be the head coach here that uh, the other one would want to join. And so it, I think those conversations go on over the years about uh, you know who we would like to have on our staff. And I always felt like if he got a head coaching job that I'd love to be a part of his staff. I also felt like that um, at Southern Utah that I'd, we'd accomplished a lot as a program and as a team. And I felt like I had some great assistants that were ready to maybe take the program to new heights. And, and uh, a new challenge for me and new opportunities for guys that have helped me grow at SUU. Now you're the only coach on the staff with head coaching experience. How, how can you help Ty and Kehlani and everyone else kind of figure it out together? Well, I, I, um, I would just make a correction. Ty has head coaching experience at the high school level, and, and it's something that we've visited about a lot. And there are, there are more similarities than differences in that way. Um, Really, I think the way I can help Kalani the most right now is by uh, encouraging him to, to stay on the track that he's on. He's got a great sense for leading young people, and um, I want to be um, somebody who helps him by instilling confidence in the message that he's already got. If there are times when I feel like I can speak up and help him, I, I will do that, but I also need to make sure and focus on not being the head coach. I've, I've been there. and. I've had an opinion on every facet of the program. I still have those opinions, but it's not always appropriate to open my mouth about them. Does he give you the latitude to be able to open your mouth, though? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, he, he checks with me on, on most things. And, um, you know, like I say, m most of the time, unless, unless it's a, a real difference of opinion, it's not worth discussing. He's got a great sense for where he wants to go. And while officially you're a small group right now, what's the vibe in the coaching room? Oh, it's... it's uh, I, I think it's fantastic. We're, we're working really well together. There's a lot of humility. Coach Sataki talked to the team today about uh, being humble and, and being meek and how that doesn't have anything to do with our, our talents or our toughness. But um, you know, we're, we're, we understand that's our responsibility to lead the way as a staff with regarding humility and, and the way we approach things. And, I, and I've really been 
it's pretty amazing for me. I, my time at BYU was just after Ty Detmers, and, and you know now all of a sudden I'm sitting in a, in a meeting or having lunch with a Heisman Trophy winner. And, and if you know Ty, you know you would, you'd never guess that he'd had that kind of NFL success or collegiate success. He's just a very down-to-earth guy, and uh, so is Elisa, and, and of course Kalani has been over a period of a number of years that I've known him. Can you maybe talk there? about? Um, part of that 96 team and sort of warriors of BYU. Was it a goal for you to get back here? And if that was a goal, what's it like now having that goal become reality? Yeah, definitely a dream come true. Maybe that's uh, s stated too often. You hear those words all the time, but it is. I, I dreamed about an opportunity to come back here. This place, these people were so instrumental in my life and continue to be. And to have the opportunity to come back now and, and you know, an opportunity um, the goal is to make good on it, but an opportunity to pass that along to these players that are here now, it's very special to me, personally. Yeah, can you talk about maybe what the point of emphasis has been in the short time since you've come on staff and what you guys have been able to accomplish? And, uh, just what's, how hectic it's been. Sure, yeah. Well, it's, it's about um, recruiting, and, and we use recruiting in a sense of those players who will join us, but also those players on the team. Recruiting the current roster is something that's really important to us. So we've spent a lot of time um, trying to get used to who each player is on the roster, what they represent, what their strengths are, where their challenges are, and how we can, and discussing how we can help them. And of course, once we have our, a sense for that, then that uh, I think shapes the way that we need to put together a staff in order to go about the business of, of making the current roster the best it can be, and then also the new players that will join and round out the roster. Has there been any specific experiences that have stood out just as you've tried to get to know the, the current players and, and the guys that are already you know trying to make this transition with you? I've had very little one-on-one -on -one interaction with the players so far, so it, it hasn't stood out. Other than you know, the team meeting today was a special moment. Kalani allowed his personality to come out. It, I think there was a tremendous amount of nervousness in the room before he entered the room, and then when he entered the room, he, he saw dozens of players kind of grab for their hats and sit up a little straighter, and he immediately put them at ease and, and went about being himself, and that's what I have great confidence that he'll continue to do. Do you guys find it maybe a little bit easier to relate to the players just because you've been there? You're a former player, Kalani's a former player, Ty. Elias has been in Provo longer than any of you, so do you maybe find that a little bit easier to relate to the current guys of having been there before? I hope that will be the case, and and we each have our own, uh, you know, we have similarities, and there's, uh, like you said, many of us have played and spent time here at BYU as uh, coaches and players, but you know we also each have our own unique individual personalities, as do the players. And I can remember that uh, as a player, some players will gravitate towards some coaches when they have issues or things going on in their lives. And hopefully, we'll be able to each share with these players who we are and be open to them, and not just guys at our position group or offensively or defensively, but throughout the whole roster. As that meeting this morning progressed and wrapped up, can you describe the energy or the sense you got as it you know, kind of came to a close maybe for the first time? I think there was a high level of confidence. Uh, Kalani did a, a, an amazing job. Uh, as I said, number one, he put the players at ease. Number two, he credited Coach Mendenhall and the previous staff for the job that they did. And he credited the players with being one of the premier programs in the country. And I think that understanding from the players that there's not a new coaching staff coming in here to turn around a winning program. <laughs> We're looking to take what we know and credit the previous staff, take what we know, and try to do the best we can here at our time. You had a chance to work under Jim Harbaugh. Has he given you any input now you've moved on, moving on to BYU? Well, you know, I'm not really, I, I don't stay in that regular of contact with Jim. In fact, I haven't um, talked to him since I, since I took this job. But, you know, the, the lessons I learned from him are lessons that I've used from the day that I started working with him. And, until now, I daily think about really a lot of the head coaches that I've had a chance to be around. And Jim's personality is uh, so powerful, and he's so competitive that uh, many, many of the things that I instituted in, at Southern Utah were a reflection of my time with Jim. Was there a moment, Ed, when coming back that it was like, I'm home? Was there something that just stood out as far as coming back to BYU? Um, well, my, um, my key worked today for the first time. So that was yeah, that was the moment. It, before that, you know, this building was not here when when I was here, and um, so uh, on occasion over the past several years, when I've been 
uh, in the area for camps or recruiting and, and I might stop by and, and try to say hello you know this I, I, I didn't always feel comfortable in here and, and the first three or four days on the job I didn't feel comfortable either and today the key worked so that was a big breakthrough for me <laughs> Well, I, I do. I didn't I didn't take a role at the right. meeting personally, and I didn't. I was actually sitting uh, behind most of the players, so I don't. I couldn't speak whether individual guys were there or not. But uh, yeah, I, I did speak with Jamal a few days ago, and he was really excited about being here. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Thanks Charlie. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.